my name is Trey Starnes and I work at Johan Vineyards uh, down in the Willamette Valley and I'm going to show you how to saber or perform sabrage on a bottle of sparkling wine. A couple things to keep in mind before you begin. Um, I would not recommend trying this at home, especially if you have never done it before. Uh, this is not a good idea for uh, uh, you know, when you have guests over um, because uh, you have to keep in mind that this is wine that is under um, intense amounts of pressure. But if you were going to uh, try to attempt it or have someone do it, you want to definitely be outside uh, for the entire process, uh, somewhere that uh, where you have a lot of space because the cork does tend to go 20 to 25 feet um, depending on how much pressure is in each bottle. The first thing to keep in mind is when you uh, have the bottles, um, most important thing is to take a look at the bottle and make sure that there's no uh, deficiencies on the outside of the bottle. So uh, you want to check it, make sure there's no dents, scratches, uh, any kind of nicks or whatnot, um, and uh, that the, the bottle's just overall in good condition. Um, there are certain sparkling wines that sabering will work with, and there are certain sparkling wines that sabering will not work with. So uh, most important thing to keep in mind is that you want to look on the bottle and make sure that if you're not using champagne, that somewhere on the bottle it says method champenois or traditional method sparkling. Uh, basically that means that the type of glass that the bottle is constructed out of can withstand the, the art of sabrage. One of the easiest ways to um, know is if you actually take a look at the glass, there's two seams that are running along the side of the bottle and these seams are key for whenever you actually want to saber. So we have our bottle of sparkling wine that's actually been inverted in just a uh, bucket of ice for about 10 minutes or so. Um, what this does is it helps chill down the actual neck of the bottle uh, and it helps uh, kind of calm down the gases so that the, uh, the cork doesn't go flying uh, completely whenever it, the bottle is sabered. When we get to the sword, um, which you don't have to use a sword, I've actually heard you can use wine glasses for this um, or, or any type of um, hard object. Um, I've seen people do this with a spoon before as well. Uh, but the most important thing is that you want to have something that um, has a rigid blade to it. Um, this is a replica. It's not sharp at all. I mean, I can touch the side of the blade. Um, it does not have to be a sharpened sword or knife um, or any type of instrument that you're using. Uh, the key thing that's actually going to allow this to work is the point of contact when the uh, edge of the blade hits a certain point on the neck of the bottle uh, that's going to strike it and release it. So, uh, so we basically have this sword here. Um, you can use the back end of a kitchen or a chef's knife if you have one would work just as fine. Uh, and the key thing to um, remember is uh, obviously uh, you want to keep this pointed away from people because it will go somewhere. And the basic idea of it is that the bottle will be held at a 45 degree angle and you'll actually want to um, tuck your finger. Every bottle should have what they call a punt uh, on the underneath. You kind of want to tuck your thumb underneath it to kind of steady and guide the bottle. It's always important to remove the wire cage as soon as you are ready. You want to locate that seam and have it kind of ported directly up. Uh, and then once you locate it, just kind of take the, uh, the blade and in one fluid motion, just strike it forward. It's not something you don't want to chop at it or whatnot. It should be just one fluid motion, almost like when you do a golf swing, you want to make sure you follow through. 